You know, this is the first smartphone war. Everybody's got a smartphone over there in Ukraine, and we are seeing things that we've never seen before. We've all seen combat, snippets of it on the news, but not quite like this, not ever before. The ubiquity of these devices and the images at times are heartbreaking, but gosh, they're incredibly rare and fascinating. We're about to see two jets, one crash, the other gets shot down, Ukrainian jets. Take a look. And that's the pilot ejecting. The pilot ejects the second guy, the navigator in the back. We don't think he made it just before impact. Uh, here's a tank getting lit up by what we believe are javelin missiles. It's not a cell phone camera. It's a drone overhead watching everything. This is the second hit. Now, you, if you look closely, you'll see the crew try to escape from the tank. You see the hatches open up, and they start to try to get out of the tank. But then they're hit again, and a guy who's on top of the tank seems to have been killed. Somebody else rolls out and then runs away, but there's another blast. And the guy who is running is now crawling. You'll see that, crawling on the side of the road. This is war, and they're right. It's hell. You see him at the bottom of the screen trying to get away. He's crawling. Next, uh, an armored vehicle. We believe this is a Russian vehicle being hit by all kinds of rocket-propelled grenades. And and Russian helicopters in attack mode. I've never seen this before, but they, they both have a nose-up attitude when they fire their missiles. Take a look at this. This is incredible footage. By the way, we think one of the reasons why so many of these aircraft are flying so low, they don't have many smart bombs. Now, a smart bomb is a very interesting weapon. It can essentially fly to the target on its own. It. One pilot will send a laser beam essentially on the target, and the bomb will fly to that laser beam. It's very interesting. There are basically little wings on the bomb. That's why they call it a smart bomb, and it knows where it's going. Now, most of the bombs they have over there, we believe, are dumb bombs, uh, bombs that when they fall off the airplane, it's really up to gravity uh, to do the rest of the work. You need smart bombs in modern warfare. That reduces uh, collateral damage, women and children. It's the smart way to go to war. And there are too few of them in the theater. Take a look. Uh, the UK, by the way, here's an example. They have nine smart bombs for every one dumb bomb. But for Russia, it's basically the opposite. One smart bomb for every nine dumb bombs. And you have to get much lower to the target. It's much more dangerous. And the chance for collateral damage is real. Just one fascinating component of what we're watching over there. Meanwhile, here... It's clear that, to me that Joe Biden is no leader, okay? Now, think about it. He has been behind on everything, and he's being basically pushed around by public opinion, Congress, and our allies. We are not leading. We are following, and he is taking his cues from all of these entities, if you will. Uh, so let's go through it. Before the invasion, what was Joe doing? He was threatening sanctions, but he did not impose them. Once the invasion started, what did he do? Well, he imposed sanctions, but he only did it gradually. And he was resisting things. He resisted the Russian oil ban, which to a lot of us is kind of totally common sense, but he didn't want to do it until he finally did it. Uh, he resisted imposing trade restrictions on Russia. And 
Basically, he's had to be prodded into supplying more weapons every step of the way. It's never his idea. It's somebody else's. Public pressure builds. And finally, he does it. He is not leading. And it seems like in any given moment, he really doesn't know what to say. Take a look. Not calling Putin a war criminal was probably the way to go. He shouldn't have said it like that. He could have said, we'll talk about that later. He's a lot of things. I'll talk about that soon. But saying it like that, he had to go back and correct it, and he might have made the matter worse. Oh, I, I, I think he is a war criminal. Oh, war criminal. All right, so now he's a war criminal. What does that mean? Is he going to be, is he going to face trial in the international court? So he'll fight to the death? Look, you ultimately want to make peace with this guy. Potentially, this was a, in my opinion, huge mistake. So he's weak. We all know that. Joe is very weak. And what he's doing is not very strong. We talked about it. I mean, there's, he's not allowing Poland even to give planes to this effort. So what does he do? He just kind of raises his voice and tries to talk tough while we're really, quite frankly, pussyfooting around, worried about what Vladimir Putin is going to think. Take a look. No matter what you all say, that's called World War III. Putin is an aggressor. He is the aggressor. And Putin must pay the price. It'll include 7,000 small arms, machine guns, shotguns, grenade launchers to equip the Ukrainians, including the brave women and men who are defending their cities. I'm sick of this stuff. We are not seeking direct confrontation with Russia. All right, so you see, no planes, no, no fly zone, um, late on the sanctions, but high on the volume. That's how he rolls. By the way, have you heard about this? What happened to that theater in Maripol? So this, we believe, is a uh, like a community theater. And in front and back, it says, and this is for the benefit of pilots. You see that word? It looks like A-E-T, backwards N, you know, Russian style. That means children in Cyrillic, children. It is a message to pilots, don't hit this place because it's a bomb shelter. And this video was taken just a few days ago. This is where, uh, number of people, especially children, women, were uh, sheltering. Well, guess what? They hit it bad. It's unclear how many casualties, but, but here it is. And maybe this was a mistake. Could it have been deliberate? Well, maybe it could have been. And that would make Putin a war criminal. It's easier for me to say it, but let's look it up in the Geneva Convention, Article 3 prohibits violence to life in person, in particular murder of all kinds, when perpetrated against persons taking no active part in the hostilities. And yes, Russia is a signatory to this part of the agreement. All right, back here in America, our leaders, not impressing anybody, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, is this normal behavior? I don't think so. A luncheon today, and she was excited that she got a letter from a celebrity. I got this message this morning from Bono. And, and most of us, we're always, whether we're in Ireland or here, or whatever it is, Bono has been a very Irish part of our lives. And he said this. He said, oh, St. Patrick, he drove out the snakes with his prayers, but that's not, all it t that's not all it takes. For the smoke symbolizes an evil that arises and hides in your heart as it breaks. And the evil from, risen from friends, from the darkness that lives in some men, but in sorrow and fear, that's when saints can appear to drive out those old snakes once again. And they struggle for us to be free, from the psycho in this human family, Ireland's sorrow and pain is now the Ukraine, and St. Patrick's name is now Zelensky. <laughs> I want the Russians out of Ukraine too. But when she said driving the old snakes out, Nancy, 
Look in the mirror, and I think it's gonna happen in November.